All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today on Bayou Diesels, we're gonna be working on the F450. She's got a little lack of power and just a little moodiness on the gas pedal, so we're thinking that it may be the screens in the fuel tank, which is a common problem with these things. Of course, when uh, we wanna do it, we got a full tank of fuel. So as you can see, we are pumping the fuel off from the bed tank over here to the tank on the bed. So while we have that going, we're gonna get our tools pulled out and get ready to drop the tank. And uh, we'll pick you up when we get a little more into that and probably maybe do the modification to do away with these screens altogether. Uh, they are a pain in the butt. You gotta do them every once a year or so, depending on the mileage you put on there. I put a lot of miles on this truck and it seems like every eight months to 12 months, I gotta get in there and clean the screens. So we're gonna uh, take a look at them and we'll follow, you can follow along and see what we got. All right guys, what you're gonna need for this is gonna be 15 millimeter sockets to drop the tank, some long extensions for the ones in the front. For sure the blue and sometimes the blue and the yellow quick disconnect to remove the lines. A flashlight and I'm using a socket for hose clamps on the filler neck. And what you have is, sorry for the pump noise, you got 15 millimeter here on this side of the tank and underneath these wires right here. And there's two of them on the front side of the tank. And you have a few quick disconnects. I don't think we can see them up in there. The fuel lines and then the actual sending unit plug. And once you get those done, we're gonna unhook the fuel lines first and then we'll get to dropping the tank afterwards and we're still pumping out fuel. So. As soon as we get to a good point, we'll check into that. All right, guys, there seems to be a lot of questions about people trying to get these quick connects off. And it's kind of an inside joke because everybody that's fooled with them knows that they're quick connects, but they're not usually quick disconnects. <laughs> so what you have here is when this is locked down on the tube, you have this situation here. And I'm going to show you this because underneath the truck is very hard to see. So first thing you want to do is pop this up and that releases the catch. So you get this catch out of the way and you have these teeth right here and that's what catches on the flare on the nipple right here. So this is for demonstration purposes but underneath the truck you're gonna wanna split your tool, drop it over the tube like this, okay? And then of course this will all be assembled down there you're gonna wanna, let me get over here where I can make this happen. This is gonna wanna work itself up into, into your fitting right here. And it takes a little, you gotta rock it back and forth and the, the key trick to it, to get it to release if they've been stubborn is, while you're getting this to seat all the way down in there, you gotta give this line a little push forward because it's sitting against the locks that I showed you. And pushing it forward gets the pressure off the locks and allows this, and you can rock this back and forth and work it till it's flush. And pushing at the same time is kind of a, kind of something you gotta take a little practice to get used to. And then all of a sudden she'll pop right off. And so I can't really show you under the truck because the way this bed is made, it doesn't really uh, show so we're going to pop off the fuel lines using these tools and then we're also going to disconnect the fuel sending unit wire which is a standard wire squeeze it and she'll release and i'll bring you back when we get to dropping the tank all right so this is the front side of the rear end or the cab side of the rear end you can see those are our fuel suction and return lines that we're going to have to get the quick disconnect on so they're going to have to be dropped i might be able to access them through the gooseneck hitch but usually I'll drop the tank down a little bit and give me a little working room. And then this wire right there is our fuel sending wire that goes over the top of the cross member to the tank. So you just need to disconnect that so you don't pull it. Sometimes you got enough slack to get it done, uh, but it's, quick, it's easier just to squeeze that, pop it off, and that way you're not pulling on anything. You can do whatever you need to do with the tank. So, since I can't get the camera in there, let me drop that out, get these lines out the way, and we'll get started. 
Uh, here's our uh, fill lines. They're coming in, and I don't know if you can see right in there are our hose clamps. We'll have to get those off the tank, and then we're gonna start pulling our bolts off and we got our jack in place to hold up on the tank we already pumped the fuel out so she's pretty empty and so we're gonna pop these two hose clamps off it's not a lot of room to film so I don't think y'all are gonna miss anything there and then we'll start dropping the tank all right guys we ready we got our jack in place we're gonna jack her up hold her tight against the bottom of the bed pull our bolts where we can drop her down and then get to those quick connect lines Alright, we'll bring the jack up. All you gotta do is put a little pressure on the bottom of the tank. Just so she can't go anywhere. And that'll hold her up against the bottom while you're working. Sorry for the noise, let's get this buzzed off. Now, we can come down a little bit with the tank. I got her stuck to the front a little bit, which will let the back stick out. I'm going to get up on top and see if I can't manage to wiggle a little bit of those connections off. And we'll drop her down and get her out. Alright, we got, a, got our lines unhooked, just like we showed you in the previous video. Let's see if she can come down a bit all right and she's sitting on the jack so she can't can't really go anywhere so we're gonna come on down and now we'll sneak her out to this side right here and get her out So we got a tank out. Pay attention to which way your fuel lines are looking. So, or mark, put a mark on the sending unit top and on the tank. If there's a tricky situation, you can't remember which way they go. I've done this one a few times, so I kind of remember. First thing we want to do is blow all of the trash around here with the air gun, just to make sure that we don't get anything in the tank. And then we'll pull these eight millimeters out 
and pull her out and see what we have. She'll just lift out, pay attention to which direction and what setup is going on with your float. And this foot right here is kind of junk. I can see I'm missing a check valve already. Not a check valve, but a, a little suction damper. Alright, so your screens are going to be in here. And I'll put, set this up to show you. These are prone to tear, to tore. These are prone to tear, and there's a little diaphragm that goes in here, and it's missing. So we'll have to check around in the front of the tank to see what's what. And this little duck bill is your return line coming back from the front of the engine. So your suction fuel going in here, getting sent out after it goes through the screens, and then the return getting spit out back into the tank so that's how that looks and we're going to set it up on the bench and show you how to pull it apart all right guys we're giving this a little quick look over again here's your float mechanism you want to be careful with that this duck bill is going to be for the return we can get rid of that right quick These components for this thing are pretty, pretty well known to give, give trouble. This right here will tear right here at the plunger. And this check valve, there's a little diaphragm that goes right here. And it's missing. The foot seems to be pretty good, so that may be good for the, the mod. And you can see right here we've got some little notches that will allow you to pull this center section out. It takes a little getting used to, to be able to get it, but we're gonna see if we can't pop her out without too much trouble. All right, this one's coming out good. So then we take our time and separate this, and here are the infamous screens. Now, you can look at that and you can tell that this is not all that dirty. So we'll have to decide whether we want to go back in with this or do the hutch mod. Or the hutch mod is just basically doing away with some of this plumbing that goes bad and rerouting it with copper tubing that will be a more permanent fix. But the biggest problem is these screens. The screens right here will get clogged up now this is mostly trash but when it gets sucked up in here it sucks up on the inside and it can't go anywhere so it just builds up and builds up and builds up until it finally blocks you off and once that happens you'll start losing power or she might not even run if you see if you let her sit overnight she may end up pepping back up on you once some of this stuff has settled down but once you pull a suction on it it's going to clog the screens up again and bacteria is most likely what I find the problem as opposed to the little bit of rust and trash that's in here. So we're going to look at this a little closer and decide if we're going to do the mod or not. And we'll see what's what. But basically we're just doing away with this whole housing. This is your, um, your suction line. Again, your return line is... Well, that's just, the return line is making a loop. Whatever blows by will blow by on the duck bill. But it's just to possibly do away with all of this stuff 
and end up with something that's a little bit more maintenance, less maintenance intensive than that. And you can look up Hutch Mod on the internet or a 7.3 fuel tank mod and basically it's just to do away with this plastic housing and these screens and let everything get caught by the fuel filter which is just an easier deal where you don't have to go through the headache of dropping your tank just to clean these filters. So let me get around here and looking at this and I'll get back with you in a minute. Alrighty, well with all of this coming apart we decided to go ahead and do the modification. So this is swole up to where it dropped the screen in the tank. The diaphragm's missing here. So we're gonna drill this out to 3 8 because it's kind of tapered in there. So we'll do that in just a minute. But first thing first, we gotta get our measurements and we went ahead and cut this band clamp off and we're gonna get that off of here. And then this whole inlet tube with the screens can come off. Okay. So basically we're gonna extend this and put this back on. I'm gonna drill through here with a 3 8 bit, just clamped in a vise and screwed by hand. And then we'll run the tube all the way through, just barely through here, and then put a union on it. So we got this one bent, and the Z right there, we're gonna put a union here, and the Z keeps it away from the float. So that's what we're gonna do with our 5 16ths, and we've got a spare piece of stainless 3 8 which we'll cut our straight extension with. And I have to go find a 5 16 union. So we'll cut this and get our unions together and get right back to you. All right, so we got our mock-up right here. And this is about 13, uh, excuse me, 10 and 3 8 which is where we measured the tube to be when it was sitting here. So we're gonna wallow this out. We got a 3 8 bit. We're gonna do it by hand. So now this is should be opened up enough to go right on the three eighths. Oh, I might have to water it a little more. Let me bevel this tube just a little bit and get back to you. All right, we'll put a little bit of a bevel on here because she was being a little stubborn, wanting to get through this foot. So basically, what we're trying to do is salvage the foot And just leave this, it's gonna bypass this check valve and eliminate all of this from going bad and get rid of our screens. All right, let's get a measurement here and see what we gotta do.
All right, looks like we need to cut three and five eighths off. So we got our mark. And we're gonna put it in the vise. And cut her off, see what we end up with. All right, guys, I didn't think y'all needed to watch the compression union video, but here we are with our compression union. You can see that it goes straight through. Even though we were missing this diaphragm, now that we got this straight through, we don't have to worry about that. And this will sit on the floor. So we've bypassed all the screens. This is our return bent like that to clear the float. So she is ready to go back in the truck and give her a shot. So we're gonna reverse our procedure and get the tank back in the truck. Um, I don't think we need to get into showing you guys that. We, it's the same process. Jack it up, hook your fuel lines up, put it in place, put your four bolts in place and hook your filler necks and you're good to go. So that's the mod for anybody that was interested and I'll let you know how it works out. And we'll see you on the next 450.